Yes, that is the official name of this phone. The Oppo Reno 10 Pro Plus is the highest-end smartphone within the newly announced Reno 10 series of smartphones and it packs a lot of punch. Most notably, it comes with a periscope lens and also the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 and that is also something that we'll be testing out in this review as well. So let's get started. I gotta make one thing clear first. This unit of the Oppo Reno 10 Pro Plus is considered to be an engineering unit because it is written here as internal tests. There is a persistent notification from the feedback app that is logging what we are doing and that is for the sake of troubleshooting in case anything goes wrong so that the team can fix it before this phone is officially available for sale. Now, it is running on ColorOS 13.1 on top of Android 13 but it is indeed slightly different from the usual Oppo flavoured ColorOS. There is still some bloatware in this version of ColorOS but really just less compared to the other versions that we've been, you know, getting used to. I know this because we also have the Oppo Reno 10 Pro without the Plus and that phone is using the retail version of ColorOS 13.1 and it is filled to the brim with bloatware. Anyway, the software in itself is pretty much the same as the ColorOS 13 that we've tested before, so nothing surprising here. The shell feature is still as amazing as ever, but I really do hope Oppo gives us the ability to add home screen widgets to it. Now, the specs of this phone is rather interesting, powered by the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 with 12 gigs of RAM for our particular unit here. It is practically a flagship smartphone from last year, repackaged as a mid-range smartphone. I really like this approach actually. Now, in terms of gaming, yeah, you don't really have to worry much about anything here. The performance is top-notch and you can get about 50 FPS easily on Genshin Impact at the highest graphical settings of 60 FPS. Unfortunately, like any other Oppo smartphones, games need to be enabled from the phone's software to make it run beyond 60 FPS. For example, Subway Surfers is a game that can run however many FPS you like if your phone supports it. For example, on the ROG phone, it can run at 165 FPS without any issues. But for this phone in particular, even though it has a 120Hz screen, Subway Surfers is locked at 60 FPS only. This happens to a lot of games actually, so do keep that in mind. Now let's talk about the screen. This is a rather long 6.74 inch AMOLED screen with a curved edge and has a resolution of 2772 of 1240 pixels in resolution and up to 120Hz refresh rate. Now I'm not really sure why Oppo went with a curved screen but it does feel really nice when holding it in the hands. Just that finding a screen protector for this phone will be challenging to say the least. Nonetheless, this is a beautiful screen and capable of covering up to nearly 100% of sRGB and 97% of DCI-P3 color gamuts with a maximum Delta E number of just 2.35. The maximum brightness of this phone is actually at 815 nits which is definitely not the best but we can still see what's going on while under direct bright sunlight. One thing I don't particularly like is the position of the under display fingerprint scanner. Once again, it is placed way too low and it's just not comfortable to use at all. Okay, now for the main highlight of this phone, the cameras. We have a triple camera setup here and thankfully there is no macro camera or depth sensors anymore. All three cameras of this phone is actually useful. Good job at removing both the macro and depth sensors there, Oppo. Now let's talk about the main camera first. I'm actually really liking all of the pictures coming out of this camera. It has good clarity, good colors, overall good processing. And while I do think the dynamic range is also good, there are just some challenging scenes that I expected this phone to do better. But this happened. Well, I mean, 99% of phones can't really deal with such scenes anyway because it's, you know, at the extreme. Night shots though is very good with this phone. I've taken this shot in a near pitch black area and it still manages to capture colors and details properly. This is just an amazing camera. The ultra wide angle camera is fairly basic one, just 8 megapixels and it takes some okay looking pictures but the details are mostly gone, especially with finer details like grass blades and also roof tiles. It serves its purpose as an ultra wide angle camera but that's about it. Now the main star of the show here is the periscope lens. Honestly, I'm not sure about two things. Why Oppo decided to go with a periscope lens for 3x optical zoom and what exactly is the focal length of this lens. 
Now in the spec sheets, it says that the main camera is 24mm lens. So the three times means that it's 72mm or let's just round it down to 70mm for ease of calculation. We saw many other phones having a standard pancake lens to do 70mm of zoom actually. Either way, the pictures coming out of this periscope lens is actually quite okay overall. For daylight shots, it is obviously going to take very good pictures. Even pictures taken in a mall look very good overall. Once we go darker though, this is where the camera will still manage to take some okay looking pictures. But I think due to its lack of OIS, it creates quite of a smeary mess sometimes. And yes, this periscope lens does not have OIS. There is also another focal length shortcut in the app that goes up to 6x zoom. Obviously, since this is a digital zoom, the pictures will be very noisy. Even in bright daylight shots, yeah, we can see noise in a picture and I mean, it is expected and I just want to point this out. If you do want to use this phone to take videos, then I'm glad to tell you that it can take up to 4K 60fps videos and it looks very good. Even at night, the stabilization is very good. The footage here might look that it's very shaky but yeah, I was pretty much stumbling on uneven ground. There is another ultra steady mode available here but I suggest you not to use it because it combines EIS in the mix and it makes the videos look very nauseating to watch. Now that we are done with the cameras, we'll talk about the battery life. It has a 4700mAh battery which I think is a dual cell battery and it can last for about 10 hours and 41 minutes in our standardized battery life test. This is not bad considering that it is using the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 with a higher than usual resolution. The reason why I'm confident that it is using a dual cell battery is because of its charging speed. Now, this phone does come with a 100W charger inside the box and it charges from 15% to completion in only about 30 minutes. That is not surprising but the temperature is. Even with such high charging speeds, it barely goes beyond 35 degrees Celsius. And this is my first time seeing this and I'm very impressed. Okay, so there are just a few more things I want to mention here. Uh, the phone does not come with an audio jack and it does not have a micro SD card slot and it is also using a USB 2.0 port so transferring files to and from your PC will be very slow and you cannot output HDMI signal over USB Type-C. We do have an IR blaster at the top and you can use the app that Oppo provided to add remote controls into your phone. Okay, so after going through all of that, I just want to say one thing. This phone is very similar to the OnePlus Nord 3 5G that we reviewed yesterday. You can check it out at the top right corner there or in the description below after this video has ended. I think both of these phones share a lot of similarities including the IR blaster, but the biggest difference here is going to be the chipset. This phone is using the MediaTek Dimensity 9000 whereby the Oppo Reno 10 Pro Plus is using the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. Now both of these phones are created with more or less the same idea in mind I think. It is going to bring the flagship experience from last year repackaged as a mid-range smartphone. I really like this approach but I'm not sure about the price honestly. From what I know, this phone might be priced similarly with the OnePlus Nord 3, maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, I'll, leave you all, I'll leave all of the details with the price and my final conclusion down in the description or pinned comment below. So keep an eye out on that and we'll see you guys in the next video.